Deadly Hurricane Matthew, a Category 3 storm as of Friday morning, rages on with wind gusts recorded off of Florida's Cape Canaveral of about 100 miles per hour. Despite weakening from its peak as a Category 5, Matthew is expected to wreak terrible damage from Florida northward to South Carolina. As the storm traveled over the Caribbean, scientists have also been able to look inside the storm to measure its intensity and track its path. To help us understand, we're joined now by NASA scientist Dr. Owen Kelly from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. Owen, thanks so much for joining us. Hurricane Matthew is the Thank strongest you. hurricane to develop in the Atlantic in almost 10 years. How are scientists using satellites to look inside Matthew? Right, so at NASA, we're a research institution and we develop experimental new technology. And the satellite we're using right now is called Global Precipitation Measurement. And it has the only weather radar in space, which gives you 3D views of the storm. You're seeing now one of these 3D images. This was captured when Hurricane Matthew on October 2nd was at Category 4. And there are all sorts of features in this rainfall shot that give you clues about what's going on inside the hurricane itself. Can you unpack that a little bit for us? What are you as a scientist seeing when you look at that image? Right, so my work has been looking at specific precipitation features that give you clues not about how strong the hurricane is, but how strong it will become over the next day or two, which is a difficult thing for forecasters to figure out. So in my research, I found that if there's a kind of an explosion of rainfall, this is a computer simulation of one of those things called a hot tower, and it persists in the eye wall of a hurricane, it's essentially telling you that energy is being pumped into the storm and the hurricane is a heat engine that converts some of that energy into accelerated winds. So we saw some of that with uh, Hurricane Matthew. Um, so some of these uh, features we've been studying, we actually saw in Matthew. Now, as Matthew turned through the Caribbean and headed toward Florida, it did move relatively slowly, but it quickly picked up intensity. Do the images like the ones we just saw give you clues to when that's happening? Unfortunately, this is a research satellite, and so it only occasionally flies over a hurricane. We didn't see it with our 3D camera right when I wanted to. However, we have these accumulations where at NASA, no nation can measure rainfall globally. We have to stitch together the observations from satellites from many nations and many agencies, and we put out these accumulations in real time. Here's an example, and that purple blob at the bottom of the screen, if you can see it, is just like a rocket jet of rain coming out of Hurricane Matthew right when it began intensifying from Category 1 to Category 5. And that's consistent with the kind of signatures our research suggests you're likely to see. Now, we, we know that Matthew lost some steam and then regained strength. How often does that happen right. to a hurricane of this magnitude? Um, it happens all the time. Um, the trick is you don't want it to happen and be poorly forecasted when it's about to make landfall. It re-intensified when it was pretty close to Florida, and it reminded me of Hurricane Andrew in 1992, which also intensified in the last day before it hit Florida. Um, back then, the computer technology and the satellites weren't as advanced, so this time around with Matthew, we weren't taken as we weren't taken by surprise by the reintensification before landfall, and that shows you we have made progress. Okay, so Owen, looking at the latest images, the ones that you've seen most recently, what are they telling you about the direction and the intensity of the storm right now? Right now, they're telling me that even though there were some doubts about the accuracy of the forecast, because a storm is coming obliquely, a small error in forecast would change whether it made landfall or if it skimmed the coast. It's looking like those 48-hour forecasts were impressively good, and the storm is Unfortunately, the eye is staying off the coast, and so the heat engine continues to get energy from the ocean, and it continues to batter the coast. People who are in the path of this, please pay attention to local forecasts, get frequent updates, and visit the National Hurricane Center for official forecasts. All right, so there's no sign that it looks like it will, it, that it's dying out. It, uh, in, in fact, it looks not. as if it's maintaining full strength to you. Um, that's what I'm seeing. Now, in real time, we're a research agency, so it's hard for us to do this real-time monitoring, but the stuff, the reports I'm getting in and the data I'm looking at, this is a dangerous storm. We're worried about the people all along the coast that are going to be impacted. It's unclear what's going to happen. Now, there is a new weather satellite currently on the launch pad scheduled yeah. for liftoff in early November. How will this one help improve the ability to measure and track these storms? 
Uh, good and bad news. The good news is it's very close to the launch pad, um, and it's going to be an amazing satellite. The bad news is the launch pad is in Cape Canaveral, currently being um, battered by this storm. Hopefully, we can still launch it in time for next year's hurricane season. Um, there are a suite of instruments there that are really going to change things, and the one that excites me the most is the lightning sensor on the GOES-R satellite. Uh, for the first time, we'll have high quality lightning data from space covering the whole US, and um, we won't miss uh, these strong convective elements that are hard to forecast and that can be very devastating. That's exciting news. All right, Owen Kelly, thank you so much for that.